And our third topic today is around um, a use of asset management. And this is a really interesting one and one that I think a lot of you today are probably here to watch. Um, and it's the use of JIRA asset for software license compliance. Um, so I'll hand over to um, Josh. I'll make you the host. So I'll hand over to Josh who can um, take us through um, this session. All yours, Josh. Thanks, John. Uh, g'day, everyone. My name's Josh. I'm a senior consultant at Systemology, and today we're going to be talking about asset management for JIRA, um, and particularly talking about some interesting developments we've been working on with regards to software licensing. Um, but before we get into that, I want to talk about asset as a whole. So a lot of you may be familiar with asset management in JIRA, but whenever, most of the time when I talk to clients for the first time, they always ask me, you know, how do I get started with asset? And, you know, what are some best practice recommendations for asset? These these sorts of things. And the way I respond to those people is, is by recommending a three-stage process in setting up your asset um, system to begin with. And the first stage of that, which I expect a lot of you are familiar with, is uh, setting up your schema and uploading your managed assets. So these are your managed assets. They have all of your kind of financial information on them and you know, typically uploaded via CSV. And the second stage is about starting to fill your, your database uh, with CIs from asset discovery. So you'll set up your discovery app and they'll be pulling in CIs. So all the technical information that's discovered on your networks. And what we've discovered is that there's, there's a missing link between the CI and the asset record itself. And so, you know, we typically start developing uh, in place automation to link those discovered CIs with your managed assets so that you've got that record between the two objects. Um, we find that's a really successful way of, of managing those two types of records. And the third stage and final stage is linking all of this back to JIRA. So starting to implement um, ITAM processes, so IT asset management processes within JIRA. And, you know, I see a, a wide range of take up on, on this stage. You know, some smaller teams are happy to run with, you know, just service requests. But, you know, larger teams and more mature teams like to implement, you know, proper custom workflows and custom issue types for different item processes. So your procurement, your retirement, your management process, um, disposal processes, you know, all of these, you can really get quite complex with it all and start linking your assets into JIRA in that way. So it kind of comes full circle there. So I see a wide range of take up in all of those three stages. And, but always at the end of it, the question is, well, what about my software licenses? You know, does does asset management look after software licensing and count software licenses? And we thought about this question a lot and we've actually developed an app that counts your licenses for you. And, um, you know, because tracking and managing your licenses, it's, it's an important compliance task that every organization needs to, needs to handle. And a lot of teams do struggle with that. So, I'll demo this to you now, if I could just share my screen. Okay, so if you've installed and run the Discovery app, a lot of this will be looking familiar to you. Um, but I'd just like to point you down to this license asset type. And you'll see here, we've added two custom attributes for total entitlements and used entitlements. And it's this used entitlements that um, starts counting up all of the detected application instances that are discovered from asset discovery, compiles them all, counts them all, and runs on a scheduled task and displays that data here for you. Um, you know, it, it's a simple solution, but we've found that it's, you know, it's an effective way of managing that with asset management because this is where all of your data lives. It makes sense to show that here as well. So, um, 
yeah, I mean, that's that's my demo, John. Um, over to you. You know, what, what's really interesting about this and, and that screenshot is that natively asset in JIRA um, and even the automation in JIRA cannot count up all the um, instances of use of software within um, your CMDB. So, and, and there is no other app in the marketplace that does this. Um, so, you know, there's a real gap. There's a real gap there that exists. And so it was something that um, we felt, you know, needed to be solved. And so we've got a, we've got a solution that can be deployed for clients. Um, we may or may not um, build it into a marketplace app. It really kind of depends. Um, it depends. Uh, but certainly for the moment, we have it as a solution that can be deployed um, for a customer specifically. So it's something that um, I'd encourage you to have a think about if you want to know more, certainly reach out to us um, and we can show you um, kind of how that's done and what it looks like. Um, but, the, you know, the most important thing is the outcome that kind of says, look, you know, you, you can move from um, software CIs, which are all your discovered um, instances of software, consolidated into a license object that shows you compliance and using those two data points of um, um, the software that you've purchased and the software that you're using. And if it's out of compliance, you know, this is where you can use automation to kick off some notifications, some alerts, some exception reporting to highlight, you know, when you're out of compliance because you obviously want to take action. So, um, so yeah, so it's something that I think, uh, has relevance and I wanted to share with you today. So hopefully you found that um, of interest.